I suffered from wheelchair to high heels, mm. a tragic accident that really changed my life. And there were mm. guys that came from nowhere. There were four with guns sure. pointing at us. These guys have, have your husband hostage. Yeah. Sure. The paramedics that came on the scene, the first one, they looked at me and they said, there's no hope. They left you mm. there. What I would suggest my brother is to pull her and put her on your lap and let her die peacefully. Sure. I had a ruptured bladder or ruptured vagina. I had sure. both my tip and fib uh, broken, dislocated hip, mm. open pelvis. But then God saved my spine. Three months in coma and I wake up and I ask to see my legs. And I was like a robot. I was sent to rehab. At rehab, I was ill-treated. Hola, San Bunani, Dumelang, Apsheni, Dimadegwa, Ne, Wararapo, and welcome to I've Been Through the Most podcast right here on Sentence TV. Thank you everyone for joining us from your different continents and countries. It is mm. an honor to have you subscribe to the channel. Of course, make sure that you are a subscriber. It's absolutely free. Okay, just click on that. We are officially on the road to 500k subscribers right here on YouTube. Make sure you follow us on our different social media platforms as well we are on tiktok facebook instagram everywhere our promos are flowing nicely so join yes. the family there and if you're listening or watching on spotify make sure to hit a like a comment and also follow and help grow our community on that side listen we also have a whatsapp channel hey we're gonna put yes, the link on yeah, we're going to put the link on our description. So make sure that you also interact there. We put all the promos, all the links, just in case you don't get a notification. Now, I'll tell you one thing I really love about this show, Sissy. Yes. Is that we meet incredible people. Yes. And amazing people. Amazing people. <laughs> and we get to introduce those people to you. But not just introduce them, but also introduce there are amazing stories that are so impactful, so life-changing, so incredible. And like today is definitely one of those once again and i cannot even tell you the level of my excitement yeah <laughs> same here i think this particular guest right um we've been wanting her on the show like and i'm yes. so glad apostle cools is finally on i've been through the most podcast so yeah. so glad finally you know that it's always him who makes things possible mm -hmm. yes we may want things to happen in our own way but if he says not yet, yeah. it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And sometimes when now we do it in our own way, it will not be impactful. Because possibly the people that will be viewing, listening at the mm, time yes. will not even learn a thing. Yes. But when it's his time. Mm. Timing is everything. Timing, Timing is everything. Timing is everything. And I'm glad. Oh. I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. it took it it took that time yes. for it to happen because I believe I believe I believe I believe I've been through the most yeah. and <laughs> yes I have been through <laughs> <laughs> I've been through them all. You have. You really mm -hmm. have. And for those who don't even know who you are, maybe just give us a brief um, introduction of who Apostle Cools is. Apostle Cools. Some they call me Cools. And some they will say Sis Cools. Others are saying Mrs. Mlungu. Others are saying Sister Boss. Others are saying the voice of a grieving soul. Mm. Others are saying mm. Apostle Kuz. Recently, others are saying Dr. Kuz. So, so yes. that is, you know, that is that is Dr. Kuz. But grown up from Nelspreet, and maybe that's why some other people I think are still thinking that I'm still. Stay there. <laughs> but that's my hometown. That's that's mm. that's my hometown. And got married in Eswatini. Um, twenty-eight years. Mm. Sure. However, my husband may his soul rest in peace. I'm um, blessed with two princesses. Aww. Recently, I became a grandmother. Oh, oh. how cute <laughs> is that? <laughs> and yes, I'm a widow. Um, I suffered from wheelchair to high heels. Mm. A tragic accident that really changed my life. I am in a business and uh, I operate in a highly male dominated industry 
that I myself sometimes I look at God and I say, but Father, how did you put me here? Mm. And um, basically, I think that is, but above all, I love the Lord with all oh, my yes. heart. Mm. And nothing can separate me from mm. the love of God. God. Mm. It might be things that I've been through, but it will still not mm -hmm. separate me from the yes. love of God. Simply mm -hmm. and straightforward. And that is Apostle Cruz. Mm -hmm. Love it. You're an author as well. How did I leave that one? <laughs> <laughs> it needed to be said by you. An yes. author of this amazing book, From mm -hmm. Wheelchair to High Shelves. There is another one that is out, but I'm not yet... Uh, publicizing this book mm, because okay. each time I read this book I always cry mm. a diary of a widow Yo. Sure. so the book is out mm. but I'm not publicizing it yet it will only be launched next year okay. and there's a reason why it's gonna be launched next year it is because I have just recently been appointed as the vice president of the African Union Widows Association Wow. wow, congratulations. And we are going to have a seminar next year. Then nice. it will then be unveiled at that seminar. Amazing, mm. amazing. I just love the fact that you've, you've documented it. Um, mm. And for the fact that, you know, it still makes you emotional. Mm. It makes me look forward to it because that means you poured out your heart and you were honest and true to it. Um, but let's get straight into your story. The first tragedy of my life was how I grew up. Mm. And that taught me resilience. I grew up in a family that it was a united unity, but a tragedy happened. My parents got divorced. Mm. And get divorced, we are four. We were living comfortably. My father was one of the men that were wealthy at the time. Mm -hmm. Now we are to move into my grandmother's house. We are 20 into this grandmother's house. Yo. We are coming from a time where you've got your own bedroom, you've got your own bed, and right now mm. you need to fight for a place to stay. Mm. And that's a four-roomed house. Growing up again, my elder brother managed to get to university, my elder sister gets to university, and we're third born now. I finished school and I couldn't go to university oh. because my mother couldn't afford. And my mother says to me, my child, you know that you've got a gap of three years mm. in between your brother and your sister. Mm. How do I take you to school? But that didn't stop me because what I did, I said, when God is in your story, oh, yes. impossibility is nothing. And the strength that I had from my grandmother's teachings. I had to take attendance. I call that a power of five friends because I took five friends and I went to town and I looked for a job. Fortunately, I got a job at Milk Lane. That's how wow. my career life began. Mm. I'm a young girl, I'm 16 years, and here I'm looking at my mother and I said, I'm not gonna allow my mother to suffer mm. whilst I'm here. Mm. Yes, I'm young. And I get this job, I begin to work. One thing that my grandmother taught us as well, that you are to be kind. In this forum house, we were 20, but half of those kids, we did not even know where they came from. Mm, because yo. my grandmother was just collecting kids and sure. the kids were staying with us. Wow. And we learned to share. We learned to share from the nothing that we had mm -hmm. to a multitude. Because my grandmother believed in giving. Mm. that when you give, mm. the Lord multiplies. Mm. We will go to church, and she will have the last coin, and she will give that last coin. And us as kids, we'll be looking at my grandma and we'll say, <laughs> and yeah. she will turn, and she will say, <laughs> and she will say, <laughs> we are When we get home, we will mm. find that bags of potatoes were thrown over the gate. Tomatoes sure. were thrown over the gate. Cabbage was thrown mm. over the gate because of her faith. Yo. And that faith 
taught me personally to say, you can move mountains as long as you believe in this God. Yeah. And therefore, I was kind to my, <laughs> to my customers. Um, there were some other customers, I'm not going to call the nation, but there were some other customers that were very difficult. Mm. And being new in the restaurant, these ones that were older, Ish. there they were like, ah, ah, yeah, when you're saved. <laughs> Because yeah. they're more difficult. Yeah. They're demanding. <laughs> you have to return the things all the time. Ice cream, milk, mm. lane. They are not happy. But I served them. I mm. did not know that by me serving them, mm. I am opening up a gate, floodgates for myself. Because later on, and that was in 1990, 1993, later in the year, then the elections started. I didn't know that this man was an influential man. One day mm. he came and he said, I look at how confident you are. I look at how good you are serving. If I were to offer you a job, mm. what would you say? Mm. And I said, I will first ask my boss yeah. if he can do this. <laughs> I'm sure he was looking at say, but this child, he's not even saying that I can just take the job. Yes. In between, I was earning 358 rands. I still have the envelope. I was earning 358 wow. rands, you know, like in a brown envelope. Yeah. And from there, 10% was going for tithing because that's how we were taught. Yes. And 10% was going for my, towards my studies. And I started doing <laughs> typewriting mm. at that time. Yeah. Lotus 1, 2, 3. Uh, it's not known now. Yeah. Lotus 1, 2, 3. Sure. And... Now, when he came, I was already prepared. So he came. One time he said, I just want to know your story. And I said to him, please come on a Sunday, because Sunday 5 p.m. is the quiet time, so yeah. I can be able to give you my background. Wow. He came, and I gave him my background, and he walked away. I looked at him, but you're walking away. And then like after this. I told you everything, you know? And then two days later, he came, and he said, when do, can you start? And I said, as long as my boss will release me, I'm going to start. I went to my boss and he said, just tell him month end. I didn't know that this man was a political influential person <coughs> from the ANC. Sure. And I found myself working at the ANC branch in White River. That was the open door. Wow. So kindness can take you a long way. Mm -hmm. Never think that the person that you are helping, Eesh. it is because you are throwing away mm -mm. something. Understand that kindness, it's a seed that you plant, not for the person, but for yourself. Fast forward. Wow. I studied even then. I was the first one to be selected for the RDP programs. This RTP houses that you see, yes. we were three in the country that were sent to go and study about the RTPs. And yeah. we came back and we implemented it. Sure. Mpumalanga became the pilot project. I was the only girl from men. Two men and I was the only girl. Young, I had to be sent to Germany to go and study mm. there. And I came back, I delivered. Yo. It didn't end there. Because of the zeal, the commitment, the confidence, believing in God, mm -hmm. believing in yourself. I said, I am not going to stay and not go to school. Mind you, I haven't been in a university desk full time. Yes. But I continued to study. I registered at Dumbelin. I did my you first extra, diploma. You were studying. I'm studying because my vision was that I wanted to be a dentist. Mm. I'll tell you why. I had a mazin yaboli lava. Mags are cool. Yeah. Yeah. So now, the big leg is going. And I said, you know what? I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be, be a dentist, dentist and, and I'm, I'm going to help all these kids. I'm going to help the kids that yeah. are like me. Yeah. And oh. for free. Because I couldn't afford sure. to mm. go to the dentist. Mm. So remember, my parents are divorced. I couldn't afford. So I had to yeah. live with us. So now, Fast forward. From the RTP side, I was then selected again to come to Joburg. That's how I came to Joburg. 
to join Department of Trade and Industry. And there, we were starting companies, the Companies Act, to include mm. black people. Mm. Wow. I was also the one who was part of that implementation process. Mm. We employed young people who registered companies to start wow. CIPRO as it is right now. Mm. Wow. Didn't end there. I was then again moved to the Department of Health, mm. Medicine yeah. Control Council. I did not apply for all these positions. From no. Milky Lane. Did not apply you for are all these going positions. Up. You're going yes. up, you're going up. Yes. I get picked. God will send someone to just go and mm. pick and say there is that young girl. And then I went, I was at the Medicine Control Council. When we were busy with the Neverprin, mother to child transmission, mm. I was the one who was sitting. I was the one who was working with the board then. When we were talking about the beetroot issue, I was wow. part of those young girls that went to Cape Town. I used <laughs> to go to Cape Town to deliver. Right now, it's, it's now emails. But I used to fly from Air Force Base yeah. with the document, taking it through to Cape Town to Parliament for discussion. Sure. It didn't end there. I moved from there. There's apron services at the airport. Transnet was closing the ground handling for SAA. And I was deployed to go and assist with that. But I got tired. <laughs> yeah. I got tired because I was moving. And in all in the, the spaces, speed. I sure. am working with men. I am working with intellects. Mm. The one thing that I never um, let go was to study. I would sit in the board as the board secretary. And they would discuss and debate on a matter. I would go home and research on that matter. Yeah. Tomorrow, when the board sits, I'll be the one raising a hand Come to on. say I researched. And I think this is how <laughs> things can be done. Yes. And I remember Dr. Helen Rees will say, but with <laughs> you, you are not even a medical expert. I'm like, no, I've got time. My husband was still staying in Swaziland at the time. Yes. So I'll go back home and I'll have nothing much to do. But I continued to study. I got tired. One time I was visiting the embassy of Botswana. Um, on a mission, and I heard that they wanted to separate the economic attache and start a section that will be just dealing with economic and investment promotion for Botswana. And I said, would you like to have a representative? <laughs> and they said, yes. You see, I'm always starting. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm always starting. Mm. So sure. now I then started that unit again. After a while, I decided to say, now I'm done. I'm going to, going to start my own business. And I became a business consultant. And that's part. So in wow. all this, it mm. was not easy because I needed to push myself oh, through. Yes. But yes. it started with that kindness of the power of a five friend that I said to myself, after finishing my matric biblical studies paper, I had only 10 rand left in my pocket. And I said, I'm not going to go home. I'm going to take this 10 rand and I'm going to take a five friend, pay a taxi, go to town to go and look for a job. And I got that job at 5 p.m. after I was only left with only five friend. Yeah. And thinking, the five friend that I have, I now need to go home. Mind you, I just finished writing my last paper. I didn't eat. Mm. So mm. now I was mm. just walking down, that spread at the time at only one street. I was only walking down the street, up and down, looking for a job. And each place where I come and sit, I'm only asking for water. Because I can't use this five friend. Mm -hmm. If I use this five friend, mm -hmm. then how am I going to go back go home? Back. Mm. But God being God, when you are determined, when you say, Father, take over, and he does, he does lead. Oh, yes, then I got married. And me getting married. Yes, <laughs> girl. <laughs> I got married at a very young age. And I remember introducing my grandmother um, used to sit with us as girls. Mm. And she would tell us, you know, how we need to present ourselves. Um, my aunt on the other side, paternal side, she will show us how to walk. Mm. To say, if you are a girl, stomach in, chest out, and yes, you need to walk. Show. You need to show up. Yeah. When mm. you enter into a place, people... People must just, your aura, man. Yes, yes. must change the environment. Yes. And then she will say, by the way, 
you are not walking alone. Mm. You walk with the power. Oh, yes. I grew up in a Christian foundation base. Mm. Although my parents got divorced, but my father leaded a church that mm. he took over from his parents. And so we grew up in this church. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother on the other side, how then she was like a staunch, I'll say a staunch, because the missionaries, the Nazareth, they came and they landed at her house with my grandfather. <laughs> and so she became an elder in the church, you know, yeah. elder. But I don't think they were calling themselves elder at the time. Yeah. But she became an elder in the church. And so this is how it used to happen in our growing up. Sunday morning, we go to Sunday school with my grandmother. Mm. Guaranteed, take it or not. Every, every yeah. Sunday. Every, she, closes, she closes the house. <laughs> so everyone goes. We are yeah. going to church. If some of them, they will be like hiding along the way. When we get to church, they are not there. But when we go back, they will yeah, pick yeah. them. We go. So my father's side, the church starts at 11. It's a Zion Christian church, mm. you know, blue and white. Uniform, yeah. So now, 11 o'clock, we attend this church, this site, and then we go home. My aunt introduced us to Seventh day Adventists. Sure. So now, Saturday, we go church to church day. whole day at church. I tell people that I did wow. not need Bible school no. for me to. <laughs> you <laughs> no, at church all the time. Saturday, it's church, whole day. Morning, so it was a routine. Mm. And even after my parents divorced, it was still a routine. Mm. And I was ordained at the age of 17. Wow. That's when I was ordained, the age of 17, from my father's church. Yeah, so I was mm. ordained at the age of 17. Mm. And that's how my ordination and becoming a pastor started. Mm. Of course, Phew. we are young. We get through this, you know, mm. one sidetracked. Yes. Mm. So, okay, fine. Now, I get married. I get married at the age of 20. I was very young. Yep. Remember when I told my grandmother, I'm getting married. At first, I had this boyfriend. His boyfriend was... <laughs> <laughs> this boyfriend was a Devena boyfriend. So, <laughs> so, because our grandmother taught us to say that age, yeah. So I come home and I'm like, hey, Coco, uh, <laughs> so I come home and I'm like, hey, Coco, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know I to be I so my grandmother discouraged yes. me. But I think she knew it mm. even before. Because now when I came with my husband, I was like, Gok, you know, so uh, there's one guy who wants to you know, get married to me. And my grandmother says, I, I stand as a sister. Because oh, she's approving now. Okay. She's swat, by the way. Ah. Uh -huh. So now, uh, my grandmother was supposed to get married in the royal house, but then she ran away. Then she got married, you know, with Kosa. Mm. So, but now she still wants, you know, yes. this homely. So she approved. And we had to pray and we had to fast. Wow. The power of three. Mm -hmm. How my husband met, we met through a friend. I was going to Swaziland in my craziness after the German issue because now I don't have a boyfriend. The other Ndebele one was not approved, yes. so I don't have a boyfriend. And I've just, my, I've got money, so I come to Joburg to my friend. And my friend says, hey, we were, I was going to be engaged, but the guy didn't come. Yeah. We're like, no, let's plot. We are going to get the guy. The guy's from Swaziland. So we plotted to go and get the guy. Sure. Little did I know that I am going to get my own. Sure. You know, I'm going to possess the land Yo. and bring my own. Wow. So we drove to Swaziland. We are girls. We are going to Swaziland to possess yeah. this one Yo. who didn't come for the engagement. I think we were all there. Yes. Sure. So the engagement didn't happen. Now, 
Uh, uh, we are going to Susden. It's fetch me. Him. We are fetching him. We plotted. We get to Susden. When we get to Susden, our friend now, just by the garage, as we got in, there was a garage there. It's way back. There was a garage. Yeah. So we said, ah, let's just, you know, get to the bathroom, refresh. We don't even clo have clothes because we are mm. going to get yes. guys. We are coming back to South Africa. Oh, we see our friend is screaming. How? Oh. And then, kind of, we did not even know the guy. Our yeah. friend is screaming now. And then, hey, she's throwing herself, throwing herself to, to guy. Oh, stand us up. Okay. <laughs> so, Tina gets plotted as a plena. Oh, Zala. Wow. Sure. But, now, here is this guy, very handsome guy. Yeah. Do you know? That's my husband. Very handsome guy. And now he's looking at me. I'm like, ah, well, this guy is Popas. No, 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 you know. But later on, they invite us for lunch. So we go for lunch. We mm -hmm. ended up now staying over. Yeah. They took us to a party. And then he tells my friend, tell your friend that I love her. Me hey. being crazy. Just I'm like, like just respond and tell him I also love him. Hey, I mean, guy. Day. Remember? <laughs> no, no, but it was a joke, yes. you know. But then the following day, now we are coming back to Joburg. Now he says, can we start where we ended? I'm like, where did we end? Like, no, you said you loved me. I'm like, ah, let me go and think, my friend. No, I can't. <laughs> Fast forward, January, this was December. Mm. January now, he says to me, hey, nah, by the way, I was not playing. I actually don't want to date. I want to get married. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. We don't know each other. So I went to my grandmother because that's the person that we would talk yeah. to. Yeah. My grandmother said, let's pray. So we prayed. 13th of January, I went back to Swaziland. He called me for lunch. It's closer from home to Swaziland. It's just an hour. Yeah. I get there. He says, hey, la, I mean, I'm serious. I'm like, ah, I, I, mean, I thought you had ah, I don't know. I'm serious. I'm like, mm -mm. let me go and pray. My grandmother says, ah, we include a coco. <laughs> no, my grandmother says. <laughs> yes. So I go back again. Yeah. My grandmother says, mm -mm. let's pray for a sign. Pray mm. for a sign. Valentine's, February now. He invites mm. me again. I find him wearing a red t-shirt. I thought it's Valentine. Mm. <laughs> okay, fine, lunch. Do you have my answer? I am, Zala, I don't have your answer. I we are still, yes. you know? Yes. Fine. 31st March is my birthday. He invites me for horse riding. I go to Swazi. Oh. He's wearing another t -shirt, red t-shirt. I'm like, okay, this is a sign. So I go to my grandma. Coco, you know when he proposed, he was wearing a, when I met him, he was wearing a red t-shirt. When he proposed, it's red again. he was wearing a red t-shirt. When I went back, 14, <laughs> it was a red t-shirt. Now again, I could go, ah, it's a sign, Vumasis. So <laughs> <laughs> like, just, just accept. Just like so I agreed. Wow. And that was not a mistake. Mm. He became the one. Aww. But you guess what now? My friend and that other <laughs> one, they never got married. <laughs> they never? No. I, they were just... Ushering you. So it's mm -hmm. me. Yes. So now what does it say? Opportunity will present itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. the opportunities will come in different ways and in different forms. Mm -hmm. So you need not to always play down, you know, an opportunity that is presented to you. Yeah. Always connect to God and allow God to direct that opportunity. Yes. I could have said, yes, it's fine. Let's date. Maybe it was not supposed to be. Mm. So I needed to invite a higher power mm. who is the Holy Spirit and mm. pray about it. Yes. Young person at home, don't just say yes when mm. you are being proposed to. Mm. Go back yeah. to God. Go and pray. Mm -hmm. Ask for the sign. And that's where the Titus 2 come in. Mm. Ask the matured woman. And that's where now I had to ask my grandmother mm. to say, Gogo, this is the issue. So yeah. because she is there as matured as she is connected mm. to God, if we are at church, find somebody at church. Oh, did I did now? I was now directing. Okay. Yes. yes. So, <laughs> sure, sure. so that is how I got married. He then moved to South Africa. And early stage of our marriage, the accident happened. That was a test of our marriage. And that was a big test of our marriage. Because we were still young. Um, I get hit by a car. My mother-in-law was here, South Africa, sick, cancer. And on that fateful day, um, my husband calls and says, Mama is sick. We were using one car. 
-hmm. And I said to him, no, it's fine. Take care of him. Um, working in Park Town. He was working in Park Town. Yeah. My mother-in-law was in Brentherst. I work in Centum. So we're using one, one car. Um, so fortunately, my sister calls and he says, I'm just here in Centum. And I'm like, you know, my sister and I, we are not twins, but we, they used to say that we are twins. Okay. That's how close, You're that's how close, close yeah. yeah. So we get an opportunity. I'm now married. We don't normally get an opportunity. I'm like, no, it's mm -hmm. fine, come. Let's sit. Nyambo um, says, still busy with mama. Um, fast forward, we decided to say, no, let's allow him to stay with mama. She will drop me at home. I'm in Camden Park. She stays in Pretoria. Mm. She can use R21 and go home. And after she dropped me, she drives. On her way, she gets a tire puncher. Mm -hmm. She calls me. She says, Sissy, I've got a tire puncher. It's already at night. It's dark. I don't think I can be able to step out of the car. Uh, what do you think? I'm like, is it after the garage or before the garage? Mm. Or just by the garage? She says, it's after the garage and it's a distance. And I'm like, okay, let me just find out whether how funny Amose is. Mm. As I was calling him, he was pulling in the garage. And we rushed and we went there. Um... Whilst we're still busy changing the tire, we are busy joking, and we hear some noises. And there were mm. guys that came from nowhere. And they had four guns. There were four with guns sure. pointing at us. Um, the only thing that came in my sister's mind and I was to run across the road. And my husband was still mm. changing the tire. Mm. We were joking, and she was like, it's a frog, and I'm like, it's a snake, because I'm afraid of a frog. She's like afraid of mm -hmm. a snake mm -hmm. so we are joking with us and as we were crossing the road the car hit me mm. um i fell on the embankment and not on the tad road and that was the fortunate part cars were passing by my legs were torn apart blood mm. was coming out um i could not move my sister was busy screaming asking for help and cars were passing yes. and there I am I did not even know you know how my injuries were but I could hear her screaming mm -hmm. and each time I wanted to stand up and she would say no sister please don't stand up mm. first paramedic came or rather police officer came um, on the scene he called the ambulance the ambulance came as the ambulance came then those guys now, they just, they saw that now there's something happening on the other side. Mm. They let my husband go and he crossed the street and mm. he finds his wife. So this entire time, these guys have have your husband hostage? Yeah. Yo. While you are, now you are injured, you've just been in an accident and they don't care. They just continue with their mission. Yes. <sighs> so they, were t they took all the valuables from both cars. So he crosses, he gets there, he finds me in the state mm. that I was. Shockingly, the paramedics that came on the scene, the first one, they looked at me and they said, there's no hope. Mm. We'd rather leave her because the ambulance is not equipped to carry her. We don't even have a trip stand. We don't even have anything. All that we do, we just carry patients that are sick from home. And we'd rather call another ambulance, but we cannot stay with you. Oh, that was tough. Oh, and they left. And the one so turned. They didn't take you, they left you there. Mm. The other one turned and said, what I would suggest my brother is to pull her and put her on your lap and let her die peacefully. Sure. And my husband did that. Oh, my sister was screaming. In that commotion, my sister boss calls and he says, I feel there's something wrong. You see how God works. Mm. And my sister explains and he pulled the strings and another policeman also pulled in and he pulled the strings. And another ambulance came, and the ambulance came. It took time. Um, I remember there was a time when I was saying to my husband, I think now I'm just going to let it go. Mm. And my husband said, 
please don't go before I pray. Mm. And he prays this prayer and he says, Father, you know my heart. I have two women that are very close to my heart. Mm. There's my mother in hospital, whom already we have been told that is the end of the road. Mm. But now we've got my wife that is here. What I request from you, O oh God, is don't take them both. Mm. Just take one and leave one. And the one that you are going to leave, I'm going to honor your command that says, love your neighbor as you love, love yourself. yourself. And I'm going to honor the commitment that I made, the vow that I made that says, till death do us apart. Not only that, but the other one that says, in sickness and in health. Mm. We have been through this one, oh God, the one that says, for richer, for poorer. We've walked the journey, but these two, we have not walked on them yet, but I'm gonna honor them. And it says in Jesus' name, amen. Wow. I was listening to the prayer. The policeman was listening to the prayer. Yeah. And this policeman, his name is Peter, and he said, I salute you, my man. Mm. And the paramedics pulled in. They started to do their thing. They tried to sedate me. I was not sedatable. You. Not at all. And they were asking, Are you not gonna, you know, collapse or be in shock? I did not know why. They did whatever they did. Now they started debating which hospital am I supposed to go to. And they chose the one that I went to. And as they were taking me, the paramedics, they are reporting to casualty. We are bringing a young, beautiful girl mm. to you. And that was registered in my mind. To say, if these paramedics mm -hmm. can say this, in the state that I am at, mm. wow. that means there is the power of God. Wow. And this power of God is not going to let me go. Mm. All that I need to do is to have a will Keep and say, you. Father, mm -hmm. the faith, remember the faith yes. that my grandmother taught us. Mm. And now this is coming in to say, indeed, the faith is going to push me. I get to hospital. When I go to hospital, I am still conscience eh, you even passed out the nurses are coming they are rushing and they are saying oh we've got a, a threatening amputation they wanted to amputate my right leg and mm. they here I am now um, I'm covered they see this beautiful girl and they are wondering the report that they received versus, versus what they see yeah what we see mm. and <laughs> And one nurse said to me, I asked, are you the one? Please call your names. I called my names. So I said, I am the wu mm. But oh boy, when they opened. Mm. Mm. My God. Two lessons there for the listener and the viewer at home. The number one, there was a reason for that one paramedic, the first paramedics to leave. They were not equipped. They were not approved. Mm. They were not ordained by mm. God mm. to touch me. There are people that we go to and ask for help. And those people will say no. It is not it's because okay. they don't want mm. to help you. It is because they are not equipped. ordained. Mm. They are not approved. Mm. And they are not equipped by God. There is the one that God is going to send. Mm. You remember Elisha and the raven. Mm. Sent the raven. And now when I get to hospital... The nurses, they saw a different side of me. They heard of what they're supposed to expect. But because I was covered, they started debating amongst mm. themselves. Let me say this. There are things that people will get to know about you. But until they get closer to you, 
whatever that has been said about yes. you, it is going to change. Mm. Because now they get to know the who you are. Oh, yeah. You are not supposed to hang your dirty linen outside. So there I mm. came covered. And that is why they could not see yes. until they got closer so. to me. Mm. And as they got closer to me, they knew what they were expected to do. Okay, now I go to theater. As I was going to theater, before I was willed, I say to my husband, my mouth is dry. And my husband says to me, here is a Zambak. My husband loved a Zambak with all his heart. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> but he takes the Zambak and he applies it on my lips. And the very same hand that he used, he applies it on his lips. Mm. And I'm saying, love, how? He says, it is because, you see this mouth? Is this mouth that is going to pray all the time. Come on. Mm. So now as I'm applying this on you, I am now taking your spirit with me. Mm. That wherever that I go, and it's on my mouth, remember when the prophet Elijah was supposed to raise... Mm. It was, it started by lip to lip. Mm. Sure. Now it was breath. And then he started speaking. So now he says, I am going to be speaking. While you are in theater. While we are in theater. Yeah. So that is the connection. But I get to theater. There's a doctor again, an orthopedic that was appointed for the day. And that orthopedic said amputation. But the surgeon the neurosurgeon and the others started saying, no, let's get a second opinion. Mm. 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 And that's God. When God says, I will be with you. Yes. Wherever you are, I will be with you. No matter you are going through the valley, but I am going to be mm. with you. I was in the valley because I was at the time where they needed to cut. Yo. That was the valley. So I needed to go through the other side. And the Lord said, no, there is one that is supposed to come. Why? Because that one has been prepared by God. That mm. one has been given wisdom by God. Yes. That one has already rested. Mm. Because those ones, they'll be thinking that because I was able to help Eno, mm. I was able to help another. So I am this person that can be, ah, ah. There is that one Oy. that the Lord has just mm -hmm. be kept aside. Mm. That you need to just come. That one is for you. And then he comes and he says, how old are you? Mm. And I tell you. And he looks at me. And he say, says to them, don't cut. Yo. I've got my leg today. Shoo. Because, because of, of that. that. Mm. that and when he said, don't cut. Jesus. Then I was sedatable. Oh. You could rest. Yeah. <laughs> you're at peace now. <laughs> because you knew says, in the Come right hand to me. Oh. And you will find yes. rest. I rested. I was in coma for three months. Yo. What? When I woke up in coma. But that was an induced coma. Yes. Because of the injuries. Um, this is what I'm told now. Because of the injuries. Mm -hmm. I had a ruptured bladder or ruptured vagina. I had both my tib and fib uh, broken, dislocated hip, mm. open pelvis. But then God said my spine. Mm. The spine was not affected. And the doctors sure. were asking to say how the spine was not affected. Three months in coma and I wake up and I ask to see my legs. And I was like a robot. I was sent to rehab. At rehab, I was ill-treated, very much so. But there was a reason, because I didn't belong there. Mm. In that process, my mother-in-law passed. My husband oh. was supposed to go home, and I asked for a pass out. And I said, can I go home? Because I know you are not going to come. Mm. Mind you, in hospital in this three months in coma, my husband will come in every morning, and every evening. Yo. He will start with me twice a day. And go wow. to his mother. Yo. And Yo. he will Yo. end with his mother again and come and end with me. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened there. Marriages were restored. <laughs> because now men were looking at this man who comes and just watch his wife. 
sure. lifeless body come and watch his wife. He played a joyous celebration five for me. I loved mm. that song. And that song, he will play it up until the end. And he will pray. One nurse adopted us. May her soul rest in peace. Mm. She adopted us, mamnes, mamnes, and said, you are going to be my son. Because every day he will come. They couldn't allow my kids to come. My daughter then was still young. Mm. They couldn't allow her to come. But how I woke up from coma, one day they brought my daughter and they said to her, speak to your mother. Hey. Yeah. Hey. And she spoke to me. I remember when we launched the book, my daughter says, oh, she made us cry. Mm. And she says, the one thing that I want to do, I want to go back, be on my knees. Mm. The very same way yeah. that I used to do when mama yes. was still in the hospital. Yeah. Mm. And she spoke, I'm told, the following morning, I woke up. My daughter has got a beautiful voice, so she will sing. Um, and now I'm at rehab. I asked for a pass out, and I went home. I couldn't go inside the car. It was a mission. Mm. But what used to happen there was, they would make fun of me. I had a colostomy bag. I had a catheter. I couldn't walk. The colostomy bag will burst in bed. Sure. And they mm. would come and make fun and I decided and I said to my husband, I don't belong here. When he came back from the funeral, he wanted to take me back there. And I said, I'm not going. And he's like, why? I'm like, I'm not going. They called my, he called my mom and I told my mom, I'm not going back. Why are you not going back? It's because there's no love. You see, love conquers all. Mm -hmm. If you've got somebody that is sick at home, give that person love. Love, yeah. Mm. Because love conquers all. Mm. And my husband had to be subjected to nurse me. I was about to ask, so what is the plan? Because you're in rehab, because there are people now who are equipped. They have to change the cathedra. They have to change all these things. And so your husband now takes on head nurse position. Yes. That completely changes the dynamic of the marriage. Yes. And sickness. Remember, he yes. asked. Yeah. He Remember, you prayed. It. Yeah. So that is it. It's not that that is what I wanted, mm. but this was directed by God, because this was His prayer. I will honor the vow I made. And He did. And He did. And He did. And this went on for how long? It went on for a year. He did. I moved from wow. sleeping on the bed without moving to your no wheelchair mobility at all mm. two crutches he did I, the colostomy bag will burst in bed at night and my husband will wake up mm. and he will change me in the morning he's going to work he needs mm. to make sure that he didn't want the helper to help at all mm. we hired a nurse mm. that was helping me during the day but when he comes back Takes he over. takes over. 100%. 100%. Some people will be saying, why do you love this man this much? If you don't know my pain, you will not understand my praise. Hey. So this man took care of me. One day, the colostomy bag bursted three times. Mm. He's supposed to go to work. I remember early hours, it was about 3 a.m., and I asked him, love, how do you feel? Yes. How do you feel? He looked at me, and he said, and he said, Nala, oh God. 
Mali can go chase because he was saying, Yo, I cannot do this on my own. But it is because there is that one who is Jehovah Rafa. The one who is Jehovah Almighty. The one who sees my heart. The one who is able to do exceedingly. So I'm not me. So please don't even feel for me. Because this is not me. Yeah. And I got to understand. One day, I decided to say, I'm on the wheelchair now. Let me just cook. And I cooked. And I heard my husband coming through the garage and says, that spinach, I know that it's my wife that took <laughs> that spinach. <laughs> I know she's on the wheelchair, but that's a spinach. <laughs> but I think he was hoping, or maybe he thought that now I'm walking. You know, maybe yeah. I'm standing up. So he was waiting for this miracle to say, oh, that means, you know, and he finds me on the wheelchair. But I had set the table. Aww. And I will never forget that day. You know, it was a joyous day in, in our home. I did not then look at that situation and take it as the end of the road for me. Mm. I continued to study. What I will say is, there is no tragedy that is too big or small that can pull you down as long as you tell your mind that I will never be alone. Mm. Because from that wheelchair, I was able to obtain mm. my master's degree seated Yo. on that wheelchair. And wow. that was my first master's degree. Wow. Mind mm. you, I've got two master's degree and wow. I've got now a PhD. Wow. The PhD, I've done it in my widow, in my widowed. Sure. From five rand. From five rand. And now just, just wow. one, just to wrap this one again. So today it's all about kindness. Mm. How I got the business that I have, it was because I assisted the shareholder of the business with the five rand at the till. Yeah. Again. Yes. Five friend. She was because short of kindness. She was short of five friend. And not that she didn't have money. But the money that the cash that she had was not enough. Enough. She had just left the wallet. You know, as women. Yes. We want to just go and yes. grab two things. Yes. Quickly, quickly. And we find that now we've got a bulk. bulk. <laughs> so now the one thing it was, do I allow this thing to be credited? Or do I allow her to go to the car? I mean I'm next in line. How much are you short with ma'am? Five friend. I gave the five friend. It was quicker. So sometimes, <laughs> if you just help sure. a person, you are helping yourself. Yes. And that's how we were connected. Come on. And then she calls me. She gives me her business card. And from there, I am today a 100% shareholder of Swatek Defense and Aerospace. I'm in defense right now because yeah. that woman just, for me, just to give that five friend. So there's a power of a five friend. Amen. And number five is grace. Ooh. Amen. Because now when you help somebody, it's grace. And the grace of the Lord may it but abide and be upon us. <laughs> hey. Yeah. You know, if, if you're not an author, I was gonna say write a book. <laughs> but then you are already but an author. already she's already an author. And then I mean wow. I've already concluded that she has to come back for a part two oh, yes, because she's not done. She's not yet. Even halfway. There's still so much. And I'm just like, wow. I thought I knew your story. I mean, I, I didn't know the story. I just knew a glimpse of your story. And I hope that you can come back. I definitely We are time. asking you before you even go that may you find time for us. May you make time for us. Because God knows that you are not done. Yes. Um, so if you if you want more of a story, she does have a book out. You actually have the, the, the book right here. It says From Wheelchair to High Hills. Wow. And we're going to leave all the details in the description box below. Please make sure you leave those comments. We will respond and we will definitely have her back for a part two. Absolutely. And I hope that you are looking forward to that. Please send us an email sentence at gmail.com. Give us your responses. Let us know if you want the book the book is available right for orders yes. right you can get the book make sure that you get the book but a part two is definitely coming because it mm. is unfinished 
business. Yeah. And because she came, because it was like a high demand. Yes. So part two is also on high demand as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing this in advance. Don't just watch this alone. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you share this incredible story, life-changing story with yeah. someone in need of it. Remember to be kind. It goes Yay. a long way. Be kind. This we highlighting in bold is the message for today. Thank you so much, Apostle Cools. Um, mm. See you soon. Dr. Cools. That is Definitely. all I'm going to say <laughs> for myself, Millicent. <laughs> and myself, Innocent. And of course, our lovely guest, Dr. Cools, and our incredible crew who've been working so hard the entire day. We appreciate <laughs> you and we love you. Bye.